taxpayers informed on a variety of tax-related subjects. Certain information that taxpayers now receive by having to visit the tax administration can be made available on this website. <coughs> the advantage of a website is that the information can be updated quickly so that taxpayers can immediately be aware of any changes. If taxpayers are aware of their tax obligations, they are more likely to be compliant. Keeping taxpayers informed also allows us to make to take a more active approach to dealing with non-compliance. Additionally, we can make use of email and social media to keep taxpayers informed. This is in a nutshell our vision for the tax administration. However, this vision cannot be accomplished without the necessary investment. The Samaritan Tax Administration is government's main source of revenue accounting for approximately 85% of the country's income. This income makes it possible for other ministries and government agencies to carry out their tasks and also make, make subsidizing of various institutions possible. The importance of a proper functioning tax administration should therefore not be compensated. At the moment, as the Minister just indicated, revenues have remained relatively flat and is even showing signs of decline. And this is due to the current situation. If an investment is not made now in the tax administration, we will continue to experience budget cuts, which will negatively affect every ministry within the government. This is already being uh, addressed. This is a main concern. You've got the tax administration being your uh, main source of revenue. And if you are not addressing that properly, you will uh, suffer as a country because other vital uh, uh, services the country is providing will be, will be suffering, will be lacking behind, as simple as that. So that's why it's very important to address the uh, uh, tax administration. You just heard the issues, uh, the concerns about the organization that uh, Mrs. Hazel uh, already addressed. I used other words, but it's more or less uh, the same concerns. Uh, and also those, uh, uh, the fact that the organization is affected due to lack of investments uh, the taxpayer will experience that as well through uh, the long uh, uh, the, the backlogs uh, that were already uh, uh, addressed, uh, poor customer service, etc., etc. So uh, very quickly, I can go through my two first slides. I'd like to continue to my uh, third one. I think this is very important. Uh, the minister addressed it already. Uh, the uh, revenues, the government revenues, and I'm talking about tax revenues because I'm talking about only tax revenues. The percentage will be a little bit lower, around the 18 percent. We're talking about all the revenues collected by the tax administration. So uh, the comparison was also made already by uh, the minister, and this is a very vital um, information. If you want to provide the community the services they deserve, you have to be a couple of uh, percentage points higher. Otherwise, you will keep on, it's a vicious circle, because of the fact that you don't have enough revenues you will have to cut into your expenditures. Why? By cutting into your expenditures, Mrs. Hazel explained that very well. If you do not invest in IT, if you do not invest in personnel, if you do not invest in housing, your revenues will keep on declining. And when your revenues will keep on declining, you will be again uh, uh, needing to cut more into your expenditures. So it's a very vital uh, 
uh, uh, problem we are facing here right now. So that's why and I concur with uh, with the final words of uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Hazel. Investments are to be made right now in the tax administration in order for St. Martin to be able to provide to its citizens proper services. There is no other choice. There are no alternatives. You need to invest now. Next sheet, please. Uh, oh, I already went into uh, this part. You can go through uh, the risks of not acting now. And it's not only not being able to provide uh, the necessary services to your uh, uh, people, to your uh, citizens, but your risk international, uh, your, your, your international standing is vulnerable as well if you're not performing uh, well as far as your tax administration uh, uh, concerns. So these concerns have been addressed already. And uh, I, I think we have to pause a little bit to look at them and realize that it is, it, it is really at 12 o'clock, not 5 to 12, it's really 12 o'clock. And uh, we need to address these concerns. Um, the minister were talking about um, increasing 26%. Uh, Here we can see and a graph and a table how it's about uh, we're talking about one percent and it's very 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 cautious calculation mrs hazel has mentioned a higher percentage which means that there is much more room to increase this 26 is the bare minimum and it is achievable only through investments within the tax administration. You don't have to raise tax rates. Invest in the tax administration and make it function properly and you will be collecting more revenues. This calculation was based on comparisons we made with other uh, projects in uh, collecting uh, taxes and collecting premiums. Mr. Elton Felici will be sharing uh, with us later on the day uh, the success story how the asset we uh, did it on a very short term to uh, uh, get uh, more revenue for SFP. It uh, looks like somebody is playing the piano, but I don't play piano, so please. Uh, next sheet. As I said before, the tax administration is, is, is a very important entity, and, and, and you cannot come with, with soft measures. You have to address it properly. I always compare it with, uh, like, what was it, 10, 12 years ago, St. Martin built a new airport. There was an old one. St. Martin knew that he had to invest in its, in, in its uh, airport, but chose to build a new state-of-the-art airport, which is the best in the Caribbean, the best airport in the Caribbean. And uh, when I listen to uh, our governor, uh, Mr. Eugene Holiday, he, he will add the best in the Caribbean and beyond. That decision was taken, I like, I don't know, 12 or 15 years ago. You can achieve it. You can be the best by taking the decision, commit to it, and invest. So that's why I'm talking about a smart state-of-the-art tax administration. 
some of the issue was all, also already addressed by um, Mrs. Issa. Uh, we talk about the new IT system, state of the art IT system that will make it uh, possible for the clients to do all of their services online through the internet. I mean, really, all of them. I mean, the technology is there. We're not going to invent anything uh, uh, new. So it is uh, possible. We're talking also, also about the one window approach. You have to align the organization in such a way that you don't need to go to different public servants in order to address your tax issues. Just one window. If you want to uh, uh, make your declaration, pay, uh, Submit a protest letter. It's one window. It must be one window. That's the only way you can improve on your uh, services to your to the uh, community. And it's very important for the tax administration to work in the present, not in the past, because that's that's the illness of most tax administration. They work in the past. They're levying right now assessments of. 2010, 2009, 2008. You cannot continue like that, continuously living in the past. And as the Minister of Finance said today, we have to live the future. So it's uh, not acceptable that we are still dealing because of understaffing, uh, because of polluted database, uh, because of uh, uh, understaffing, etc., etc., that you have to live in the past. A modern state of the art tax administration cannot afford it. Oh, I forgot the last item was also integrity. I think that the, the tax administration must set also an example. Uh, because it's also an entity that goes into the private lives of people. That's why the tax administration must be an example for the rest of the community. In which the integrity level is very high and not being questioned. So it's not only, we're not only talking about professional staffing, but we're talking about also with a high, uh, staffing with a high level of integrity. And that's it. that is very important for a good performance of the tax administration. Um, the issue of housing is very, very, very important. And I think that uh, we cannot address that enough. So with your permission, uh, Mrs. Hayes, I would like to emphasize a little bit more of the need of proper housing for the self, but also for the client. You cannot tell the client, you cannot tell the taxpayer, okay, you're finalized here, and now go to the other building and do the rest of your business. You cannot do that. And then it's not good for the personnel as well, because you have to integrate physically the two uh, separate organizations physically. One other thing is, and we're going to talk later about tax reforms. All the tax reforms you can think about will not function properly if you're not addressed the concern of concerns of the tax administration. Whatever you think about, the tax administration still have to have an update database for any tax system you want to apply. The tax administration must be able to assess your income for any new tax system you want to introduce. The tax administration must be able to assess your sales. So you can think about a lot of things, but if the tax administration is not functioning up to par, it will be difficult also to deal with other tax reforms. 
So priority is address the tax administration now. Okay, and I think it's feasible within three years. I'm not going into uh, all of the uh, details of transformation, but I think you can work both on the transformation of this new state-of-the-art tax administration and at the same time address some short-term uh, uh, quick wins. Mr. Uh, uh, you address them already. You have to address on um, uh, very short-term for example, the, the cleaning of your polluted database. Uh, you have to uh, uh, reduce the backlogs because when you start in the new administration, you cannot start again in the past. You have to start with new personnel, new IT system, a uh, up-to-date database so you can start working in the present and looking into the future. Uh, so it's very important that everyone commits to this uh, endeavor and I think there are some key players today in uh, this room that has to uh, do their part uh, as well in the sense that uh, can, can help and can add to uh, the services that the tax administration is uh, providing. That was the last one? Really? Okay, so this is the last one. Uh, we'll have to do it. We'll have to build this new, smart, state-of-the-art tax administration. St. Martin can have the best tax administration in the Caribbean and beyond, simply by building it. You did it in the past, you can do it now. Thank you. Of course, with all the original stuff, all the things are like the people at the education and ICT facilities and everything that you need to do the business right. Uh, but don't forget that we also have to change the system of taxes. That we, we still think it was changes to things in the taxes. But the changes of taxes, when you change something and your organization is not able and adequately facilitated to do that in the right way, then you would better not change anything because then everybody gets confused. So there will be a kind of phasing that you first say, okay, get our things in order, get our tax department in order. In the meanwhile, we think and we analyze what changes we will implement in the tax system itself and then you can make the next step. So, when we estimate, when you look at the planning that we already saw about three years for the, for the changes that we, we, we think are necessary in the, in the tax department by itself, I think we can maybe use one or two years to think out the blueprint for the new tax system and be able to implement that third or fourth year. And that is a normal period. A lot of times, you see in this environment uh, where I work, that the ambitions are very uh, tense. Uh, things have to change but now. Uh, not now, okay, tomorrow. But some things take time. And tax systems and reforms of tax systems uh, need more time than you think in the first place because all the, the people that are, if, um, how do you say that, and by the doctor, um, involved with it, they, they need to be heard and, and need to recognize themselves in the solutions that, that you have the last thing that you find. I have a problem, ladies and gentlemen, that my, my glasses normally have a reading part at the downside of the glasses. <coughs> wrong because the other one broke. Um, so I have to take it off to read my stuff. So.
You also saw them. Okay, we had the, we had the agenda, and on the agenda there was not our appeals as the only name. Jan Yosayani is there as well, he's sitting in the, in the public, uh, because the plan to stay is to be here with two people and then with one microphone, that it be like this. That will be too intimate, I think. So, the thing that will, will be done is I will do the presentation, and uh, then the questions are not too difficult. I will ask Mr. Zayari to help me. Probably I need that because it's a topic I understood from the public that there's a, a lot of interest in it. So, let's see what happens at the end of the presentation. Please wait for that moment. Then we have Shifla. Yeah. Development of development of fiscality. Uh, um, of course, you don't do that because, because out of your own uh, observations. Uh, what you use is uh, investigations and reports and uh, tips that are available in the world. And there are several um, uh, uh, entities busy with that. Question, what do you do with your tax system and how are you transform? In what direction do you transform? And there is a, a thing called the Merlin's Review. Uh, that's a report, a, a very, very important report on, on tax reform that's being used in all over the world to uh, uh, click on their own perceptions of the changes that, that we uh, Also, OECD is assessing things, based also on the same report. And also, Holland had a, a report on tax transformation, based again on that same no, it's a, a review report. So, what we do here is the same as the other one did, follow the leader, follow the leader. Um, one of the tips, one of the indicators that uh, is given is that. Um, no, stand, I stand, stand on the other side. Uh, where are we now? What, what, what challenges do we see now when we look at uh, our situation? And then we see that um, we have a lot of difficulties enforce our law, our, enforce our legislation. I think that should be a reason to postpone your legislation changes and wait until you're, till you're ready, until you're there, until that quality is okay. Um, this morning we have a lot of uh, examples from, from that. We also see that the public, but that I think that's a worldwide problem, nobody wants to pay taxes. Period. Um, but they, and they have to understand that they have to contribute to that thing that government is delivering to them. Like simple things like a road, and a school, and a police force, and everything that we, that we do as a government. So, but that understanding is not always there, not from day one. So there has to be a connection between the, those two. And very important also is that the government as a whole uh, is uh, showing the, the integrity level that is expected in society. Because when, when that doesn't happen, that society says, yeah, but I'm not paying for that crap. So, um, that's a very important building stone for the, for the morality of the taxes uh, and the taxpayers in, in 